That's even All better. right. We are here for another edition of Faces of First Atlanta with Ms. Mary McMath. How are you? Brad, I'm great. How yes, are you? I'm excited you're here doing this video with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so uh, this is all about you. Does that make you nervous? I'm yes. <laughs> I'm also flattered. Yes. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, I want to know your story. I want to know how you got into real estate. I want to mm. know, I want to know everything. All the things. So tell me what I need to know about Mary McMath before real estate. So I grew up in a real estate family. So there really okay. is no book. Yeah, okay, fair and enough. I remember, you know, growing up like real estate talk at the dinner table all the time. And With mom, dad, dad, dad. And I started helping him in my, you know, when I was in the eighth grade, started doing like administrative stuff for him. And I never wanted to be in real estate. Yeah. Because at times he had tons of money and at times he had no money. Yeah, of you course. know that how we all. Um, the roller coaster. Yes. But then. Um, graduated from college, didn't know what I was going to do and started selling real estate. And now I love it. Okay. You know, now I really feel like I get to help people in my little corner of the world. So take me back. Where'd you grow up? So Marietta. Marietta. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, went to high school there, right? Mm -hmm. I went to Walton. So you didn't want to be a real estate agent, but what did you want to be? I didn't know. I didn't know that sales was like really a thing. I thought I needed to be like a teacher or a doctor or a dentist or like a Thing. I didn't know that like just wanting to help people yeah. through sales was a thing. Yeah. So I didn't really know. I struggled with that. I was long. listening to a podcast recently that talked about how there should be a gap year between graduating high school and going to college. Mm -hmm. You almost need that year to kind of figure things out. So I can see that. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So uh, you didn't know. So you just decided to go to college. Uh, where'd you go? I went to the University of Georgia. University of Georgia. So go you're dogs. a dog. Did you see the game? We don't have to go there. All right. So uh, you, you go to the University of Georgia. What'd you study? So consumer economics. Okay. What's that mean? It's just a general um, degree, really, because I didn't know what I wanted to do. But I loved the professors. Um, it was through the College of Family and Consumer Sciences. So why'd you pick it? Because I could get into it. Okay. <laughs> That's honest. Yeah. And I like the professors. Okay. I still keep in touch with several today. I so. love it. All right. So you, you're going to school. You get this degree, right? Mm -hmm. What's the dream? To get a get job. Out. <laughs> and get, yeah. Get through college. Get um, a job. So, and so one summer when I was home from college, I didn't have anything to do. And my dad said he would pay for me to get my real estate license. So I did that. I had my license. Um, what year was that? So 2002, I got my license. Okay. And then graduated from UGA in 2005. Gotcha. So, so you've had your license a while. Yeah. 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 I like Almost that. as long as me. Yeah. Uh, you're years. next year. No, you're two years away from your 20 year anniversary. I got to come up with something fun for my 20 years. That'd be fun. 20, 20, 20 and 22. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So uh, you, you got your license. You, did you get a job? So I worked at a Keller Williams office as like an intern during the summer. Yeah. And I did that for three summers with Lynn Larson. And I loved Lynn. Do you yeah. know Lynn? I know Lynn. Lynn Doty now. Yeah. Um, loved her. Yeah. So, so you were kind of her intern yes. helping her. Yes. Okay. And then, then what? So then graduated and I had a friend that was working for a home builder. So I went to work for a home builder for three years, and which I liked working for the builder, but I had friends buying their first condos and I couldn't help them. And that bothered me because yeah. they would ask me real estate questions and I was happy to talk to them about you it. You had to refer them to somebody. Right. But, yeah. I, but I couldn't really protect them and make sure they got the best deal and make sure they were yeah. protected. So this whole big scheme plan not to get into real estate. <laughs> Worked just great. didn't work, right? It didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. It you know, work. I love the, I love doing these faces of first Atlanta because everybody kind of has their fun journey of how they got into real mm -hmm. estate, and over half of them say, "I was determined not to get into real <laughs> estate," <laughs> and it, uh, it it brought me in. But um, after knowing all that, would you change anything? Oh my gosh, no. No. Why? I'm so grateful. I learned a ton working as the intern for the office. I yeah. watched big teams and how they were doing yeah. and what they were doing. And then working for home builders, I they were I had such good sales training. Yeah. So that was a great experience too. Yeah. But then I wanted to be able to help, you know, but then so in 2008 I got laid off during the like working for the sure. builder and it they stopped on. building. Yes. Yeah. But it pushed me into this side of real estate and I okay. think it happened how, you know, how it was supposed to. Yeah. 
So um, uh, the home building side of the industry is very sales driven, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then the resale side is, uh, it tends to be very relationship driven, True. although some people approach the business sales driven. How did you approach it? So that's good. Even when I worked for builders, I was real relational. Okay. Um, yeah, because they- You strike me as a very pleasant, relational type person. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so the, I guess this side of it is honestly more natural for me because I can really find what works best for people. Because even working for builders, like the thing is, basically get them in a home. But if it's not a good fit for somebody, then I couldn't tell them it was. You, did, you almost had to sell them on it regardless. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because you only had one option. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this side, I can find the home that makes the most sense for my buyers. Perfect. Well, or get my sellers moved. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So um, home building pushed into real estate in 2008. 2008. What's your dad saying this whole time? Is he laughing? <laughs> Yes. It's his, it's his ongoing joke. I'm yes. Sure. Yes. yes. My daughter who never wanted to get into real estate. There's a t-shirt I keep meaning to buy my dad. It comes up in my Facebook ads, yep. you know, but it says all I ever, we're behind every great real estate agent is a dad that believed in her first or something. And it's, that's You should buy him that for Father's Day. I need to. Don't watch this video. I know. Yeah. Close your ears. <laughs> all right. So uh, gangbusters day one. So I put on Facebook that I was in real estate at the time with another company. And one of my friends, the sister of one of my friends messaged me and said she was moving to Atlanta from Florida and could I help her? And I, I was living with my parents at the time because yeah. I had no money. I remember turning to my mom and saying, Karen thinks I'm a realtor. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do now? Yeah, of you course. Know? And mom's like, you are a realtor. So then I started working with my dad about like, what do I do now? So, and I learned so he, he was your original mentor, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yes, and I learned a ton and got her in a great home. She's still in that home today. Okay. So, but I remember that first client of just like, yeah. ah, what do I do now? And this is in 2008. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my friends from college started buying homes. So that was a natural market for me. Yeah, yeah. For people to And uh, it's hard to get your foot in the door when you're young and mm -hmm. your sphere of influence doesn't necessarily own houses yet, right? True. Um, so you got to uh, obviously be strategic and, and figure out ways to develop relationships with people that are buying and selling houses. True. Until your sweet spot happens mm -hmm. when your friend circle grows up. True. Right? True. I started out selling a lot of $100,000 condos. Yeah. Because in 2008, the condos were so cheap too. Yeah. And now, you know, we're selling those condos and they're buying the $500,000 house. Of course. Like, or the next, you know. Well, the move up. Yeah move up yeah um so did you work with your dad in the beginning or just separate i did for several years he okay. was like my mentor we worked together okay um, like as a team or yes. okay yes and Perfect. that was great experience i learned a lot yeah um and then i got ready to go on my own so, so then you have that conversation go oh my gosh that's not for the <laughs> <laughs> that's not for public okay? that's, that's not for the <laughs> some things we just go right past all right so we move on and you separate and you go uh out on your own. Mm -hmm. What year was that? Probably 2010. 2010. Yes. Perfect. So now you're out on your own. Mm -hmm. uh, what'd you do? So started trying to figure out how to get clients. Like anytime I, you know, like when I get invited to like a baby shower or a birthday party, I go because I want to, I want to see my friends, Sure. but often it very naturally comes up like real estate stuff often very naturally comes up. So just getting out and meeting people and building relationships yep. and talking about real estate. So when they say, Mary, how's the real estate market? It's great. It really is great. Prices are higher than they've ever been. Interest rates are lower than they've ever been. Right. So it's good for buyers, good for sellers. It's really a sweet spot in the market like I've right never now. seen. What did you say in 2010 though? Oh my God. It was good for buyers. Yeah. Prices are crazy low. Yep. Like that was, it was a great time to be a buyer. If you had a job, you had some money mm -hmm. and you had good credit, you, that was the sweet spot mm -hmm. of 2010, right? I like I bought 10 homes. You could buy anything you wanted mm -hmm. um, for the right price or, or a low price, actually get good money, mm -hmm. uh, a good, good value, interest rates. And which we thought were good then. True. Now, not, we only need to go there. <laughs> but, uh, 
like six percent we thought that was great great. yes uh and then uh as long as you had some money to put down Mm -hmm. uh you could you could buy property and that was the sweet spot right everybody that bought like or a lot of people that bought like 2010 and since have made a good amount of money yeah on their homes and then now when you answer that question uh, it really is a different sweet spot because mm-hmm. it's kind of the best of both the buying and the selling worlds mm-hmm. right now. Um, but uh, what I'm hearing you say is when somebody asks you how the real estate market mm-hmm. is, you're explaining to them what really the sweet spot is. It's true. If it makes sense to them to take advantage mm-hmm. of that opportunity. Well, and that's the thing. It's got to make sense for their personal life. Sure. And it doesn't for everybody. But for most people, it's a good time. Yeah. Perfect. So you're you're in this career real estate 2010 you start climbing the ladder in mm-hmm. success and i heard you uh beat the uh, very own clark davy one year as an individual agent i heard that walking mm-hmm. in here and you're certainly on the superstar mm-hmm. sheet on the board right now behind Thank me you. uh so you're obviously very successful mm-hmm. how'd you do it so the best thing i've done for my career is coming to keller williams i came in 2012 and started the coaching and that pushed me just opened my eyes to so much about real estate um the coaching just so what did that coaching look like so i when i did that i loved it when i did the maps coaching which i need to get back into that but it's just very focused on the goals you know like weekly looking at the goals what am i doing to achieve my goals you know how can i help more people um, just really hyper focused on the goals. It was like it took it to a professional level. Yes. Okay. That's well said. Okay. Yes. So you you take it to this professional level, and your business just starts to explode. Mm-hmm. Yes. Another thing Kelly Williams has taught me is about leverage. Like I used to try to do everything myself, and that's just impossible because I only get twenty four hours in a day. Yeah. You know. Um. And about just getting help where I need it. Like I have a contract to close person who I love. Um, I have a realtor in the office who, like, if I have two people that want to see homes at the same time, will show one set for me, you know, Um, and just help me with all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, because even though you're a real estate professional, you Mm -hmm. have other uh, good parts of your life that are going on, right? Yes. Yeah. Fair. So we kind of skipped over that, but tell me, uh, you're you're married? Yes. Tell me all. So married and I have four kids. All right. I spend as much time what's our there. age gap so one four five and seven one four five and seven so time is a limited resource in your your life right mm-hmm. so leverage is an, not even a luxury it's a necessity right yeah. yeah that's been the leverage has changed my life from like running myself ragged particularly like running all the errands like putting the signs out putting the yeah. lockbox out like all that stuff that just takes time you know, and sometimes I do that stuff, like throw my kids in the car and, you know, if you just do what you have to do, yep. but the leverage has been life changing. So one of the uh, interesting things about this story or, or similar stories mm-hmm. is when le- leverage is looked at as a luxury, uh, a lot of agents tend to just do it themselves mm-hmm. because they it's not a necessity at that point in their mm-hmm. life. It's a luxury and uh, they'll save their money or whatever. Mm-hmm. But people like yourself that find yourself in need of leverage from a place Mm -hmm. of necessity have to engage it much quicker. Mm -hmm. But the byproduct of that is your business probably grows faster because you do engage in it. So that's the magic of the leverage that I've learned here. Like when, if if I've got an hour, you know, if I'll spend the hour reaching out to my database, checking on people, seeing how they are, that is an activity that will result in me being able to help more people and sell more homes right. compared to if I spend that hour taking a lockbox to a home. It's not that the taking the lockbox to a home is a bad activity at all. It's just that that's not something that allows me to help more people. It's, it's all about uh, leverage is putting you into higher dollar productive activities. Yes. And your advice and opinion is your most highest dollar productive activity as a real estate professional, yes. right? Being face-to-face with clients uh, in that fiduciary relationship, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And putting a lockbox on a house doesn't necessarily, that's not a fiduciary relationship. Right. It's a functionary relationship, right? right? And it still has to happen, Yeah. but it um, doesn't deepen my relationship with clients. Sure. All right. So uh, being a mom of four, mm-hmm. 
I'm sure there's some fun, interesting real estate stories uh, where your kids were involved. Oh my Tell gosh. me a good one. What about just like trying to take a work call and as soon like the kids have been quiet. As soon as I get on the work call, they all start, you know, mom, 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 and me like running through the house trying to hide Avoid from them. my kids, hiding in my closet, like, or stopping, you know, driving, and they all start screaming yeah. while I'm taking trying to take a work call. So I stop the car and I get out of the car and I can still hear them screaming inside <laughs> the car. It's not the most glam. I can't believe I'm admitting that. Like that's not the most glamorous thing I've ever done. But it's usually like if I can talk for two minutes, I can, you know, work out whatever's going on. Sure. Um, so. Well, I think it's interesting with the, the pandemic we've been going through, mm -hmm. all of a sudden there's this looking glass into people's personal That's lives true. we may or may not have seen before, That's but true. you've been living that for a while anyway, That's right? That's true. Yeah. That's true. So, but people are probably a little more accepting of, of the realness of life these days. I hope the so. The dog barking, the kids screaming. You I know. hope so. The kids have been some so much more, but they're all, are, they're going back on October 5th. Ha! Yes. <laughs> We're excited. Next week. Yes. Can you believe Thursday is the fourth quarter? That's insane. Of 2020. Brett, where has it gone? It does that every year. Although this year was an interesting year. So what kind of success are you having this year? So I'm, I've honestly been surprised with my success. I okay. thought the pandemic would slow down the real estate market. And for me, it did for like March and April. Okay. I, you know, people just weren't doing much. But then the pandemic... I think it's made people think more about their homes. Like we need more space. We want to be in a, you know, because we're not driving to work, we don't mind being further out. I've seen that with several clients. I had several clients who wanted to be in Buckhead or Brookhaven to be close to work. Yep. But now that they're working from home, they're fine with Alpharetta or even coming just, you know, they're, or Roswell, they're fine being further out. That's, that's so that's been interesting kind yeah. of on the front lines. Well, and a lot of people are saying they don't think they'll go back to the office full time in the near future at all. Yeah. I think their companies are spending so much money to get it so that they don't have to go in. It's interesting. Yeah, I, um, Gary Keller was talking about at the mega agent camp that <clears throat> he believes we've got at least a year or if not two years of uh, disrupted life or new normal life or whatever you want to call it. Interesting. Yeah, before the world goes back to normal, right? That's interesting. But what's normal? I know. Right? That's the truth. What is normal? What's normal? Yeah. So now people are, I mean, to me, in my world, the market's going crazy yeah. right now. If people are tired of being home, they want more home, yeah. different home, you know. So what was your best day in real estate? Oh, best day. Well, last Friday was supposed to be <laughs> a really I never think day. about it. Well, yesterday. <laughs> Friday, I was supposed to have three closings and only one happened. And I blame the two that didn't close on covid one of them, the loan didn't get out of underwriting, which has never happened to me in five years with this lender. Yep. And the other one, a last minute title issue came up, which has also never happened to me in yeah. 15 years. But I think the attorneys are just, and the lenders are slammed with refinances. And so last Friday was supposed to be one of my better days ever. And it turned into just a good day, which yep. I'm grateful for a good day. Uh, but um, my best month ever in June of 2014, I sold 11 in one month. And that was wow. awesome. That was really fun. 11 properties in one month. Yes. And uh, you still live to see it, right? Yes. Perfect. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Um, so uh, my question to you is really, what do you think your uh, secrets to Mary's success are? That's a good question. Um, I really genuinely like to help people. And I think they know that, you know, like I, if I tell them, I think it's a good deal. It's a good deal. And if it's not a good deal, like this is not a good deal and that's okay. We'll find a good deal. But okay. I try to be really honest, even when it's not in my best interest and just try to help people. Um, sure. I think it's a relationship business and I happen to sell homes. Like I get, what do you think, mean when you say that? Cause that sounds like a catchphrase, right? Maybe it is. It just like, I just do my thing, like being friends with people. And then when they have a real estate need, I say, if, you know, if you'd like to, we can go look at homes and if they don't want to, it's fine, you know, but I offer it. Yeah. So just do my thing, be in friends with people. And if a real estate conversation comes up, I offer to help. Got it. So how many friends uh, do you have? Lots. Lots. I have over 3000 Facebook friends. I'm kind of proud of my Facebook. Friend oh, wow. and I, when I would lose one a Facebook friend, like someone unfriends me, which happens, I used to be like, 
pretty quickly tell who it was. I've gotten to where I'm losing my game on that. I can't always tell who it was. You can't tell who? who Sometimes. But. Okay. Okay. But, and then in my list of people that I mail stuff to, I have just over 300. So, and I'm always looking to grow that. Like, I love to help people through real estate. Sure. So 3,000 Facebook friends, mm -hmm. 300 uh, A clients in your mm -hmm. sphere of influence, right? Mm -hmm. um, how long did it take you to build it up to that? Oh, good question. That's a really good question. Um, so, well, I started working on the Facebook thing when Facebook came out in 2005. So that's okay. kind of an ongoing, you know, and the, it's, not, it's mostly people I really know. It's not just random people. Yeah. Most, mostly there have been some people i've just been curious about so i friended them yeah of but, course um it's mostly we have to admit that. that in this day and age well and then the yeah. 300 people that i mail stuff to a lot of that not all of it but a lot of that is couples so okay. then it's probably 500 people five or 600 people if, if that makes sense yeah. and for a while i was sending mailers like if to both people like two to the same house but then I got feedback that that was just kind of repetitive. Got it. So I quit that. So you're sending one to the husband and one to the wife yes. or yes. vice versa? Yes, with the idea being like whoever opens the mail would be the only person seeing. But then I, got, I didn't get positive feedback about that. Okay, so it was a little over my, overdone. Yes. So um, if I'm an agent and I'm looking up and going, man, Mary's got the business that I want to have. Pull back the curtain for a minute. So obviously you have a social media presence. Mm -hmm. Um, 3,000 people that you know, like, and interact with in a, a digital environment, mm -hmm. right? You've got your A list of mm -hmm. 300 addresses that mm -hmm. you, uh, you probably despise calling it an address because you're a relationship person. Yeah. So uh, 300 destinations of relationships, Fair. right? Fair. Uh, what else do you do? So my, what I, my goal is to send a monthly mailer yep. to the destination um, and then a week later call and say, hey, how are you? What's going on? Like talk. And then oh, like by the physically pick up the phone and talk. Yes. And I think the phone calls are powerful. The phone calls are where people are really like, you know, we were I've sold several this year just by doing that. Like yep. and people are like, you know, we were talking about it. And I just want to have a conversation with people. Like if we talk about it, they do not have, like, I want to be their realtor for life. So if they want to move today, that's great. If they want to move next year, that's great. If they want to move in five years. So I'm happy to have a real estate conversation. So the idea is do the mailer a week later call. And the point of my call is, did you get the, like I just sent um, the veggie beef soup that I cook all the time in the winter. And the veggie back, beef soup. Yeah. Okay. It's a soup I cook. And on the back had, you know, hey, you know, just like a little blurb from me. Yeah. Um, so the idea with the phone call is, did you get it? And how are you? So the, and I, to me, the phone calls are the power. So, all right. I'm going to challenge you for a second because okay. I think a lot of realtors say they make the phone calls. Do you really make the phone calls? Okay. That's such a good question. I've probably made five in the past month. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I try to, I mean, so yeah. Okay. Like if I need to keep a tally. But have you in the past? Yes. Like when I was doing maps coaching in 2014 and had my big year. Okay. So when somebody was holding you accountable, mm -hmm. you did it. Yes. And now that you don't have somebody holding you accountable, you're Slacking. doing a few yeah, here I could, and there. Yeah. If I, I want to do the maps coaching again because that the accountability kept me on track. Yeah. I, uh, I always equate it to getting healthy and going to the gym, right? When you have a trainer or somebody holding you accountable, you go and you do it. Mm -hmm. And when you don't, we're not our best it's accountability true. partners, right? It's true. So um, wouldn't trying to catch you and saying you didn't make it, but um, I also, uh, what I'm hearing you say is there's a lot of power in those phone calls. Yes. And um, how do you call 300 people in a month? So how do you, yeah, how'd you break it up? My goal is to call all 300 once a quarter. Okay. So it would be a hundred a month, mm -hmm, four yep. times a year, and then a hundred a month, twenty-five a week, like five a day. Okay. It's that number. So breaking it down. Yeah. I gotta get serious about it, Brett. Now. All right, getting... let's get you a coach. I know. All right. I know. All right. Well, that uh, maybe that leads into my 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 favorite question. I always ask, like, if you were to give a TED talk or write a book, mm -hmm. same kind of thing. What would yours be about? That's a good question. Um, probably about how to like 
honestly how to be like a, a working mom because it can be a challenge and like I want to be awesome wife and mom and I want to be awesome realtor and you can do both at the same time you know it, it's like sometimes I'm like totally in work mode and then sometimes I'm totally in wife mom mode and but you can you can do you can do both so if you were going to break that subject down into maybe two two talking points obviously mm -hmm. not all of your talking points but what would two of the talking points be one be present like yeah. when i'm doing my thing with my clients like be present and do a good job with that and then when i'm at the park with my kids like put my phone down for 30 minutes and be, be present. present there because it's really easy to be on the phone all the time you know this is me texting um but to be our thumbs are yes good. yes um I, I, I think it's the, the scroll now. That's true. The, the index finger scroll. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But uh, shutting that down, being mm -hmm. present. Yes. And then focus on relationship building because it's a relationship business. You know, like people are good. They're good. You know, people are going to use a realtor that they know and like and trust and to be that person that they know, like and trust. Well, would you, I, I'm just listening to you say this, would you agree that if you're doing business with people you have a relationship with, they understand who you are as a mom mm -hmm. and they understand who you are as a wife and they understand uh, they're probably more accepting of a kid crying in yes. the background. Yes. And there have been times when I had to like, you know, a house comes on the market today, you know, we need to go see it this afternoon. Like there have been times where I have to bring my kids and I don't like to do that. But when it's a friend or something, it's not the end of the world. Well, and if it's a relationship, they understand, mm -hmm. okay? And I wouldn't do it all the time. But if it's, you know, like this house came up today, we need to go. Yeah. You know. Do what you got to do. Yeah. But be present and build relationships. Build relationships. What do you think, Brett? I think you're awesome. Thank you. What else should I be working on? Yeah. Well, now we just got to go get you a coach, right? Yes. So you get back into the, the grind. I love it. I had a coach, my coach in my most recent coach that I really liked, I reached out to him and he was full, which, uh -oh. you know, happens. So, okay. Do you coach Brett? I will find you that coach. Okay. We'll talk offline. Okay. That's one of those. We draw the line and talk offline. I'm kidding. All right, Sorry. Mary, you're awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Brett, thank, thank you, you. for uh, letting us glean some insights from you. And uh, I just appreciate it more than you know. Thank you so much. Right. Have a good you. one. You too. Bye everybody. All right.